thank you for joining us for this second whirlwind tour of the Next Steps Idaho website covering resources that high school juniors can use. Thank you to all the college and career professionals who responded to our survey about the most frequently asked questions that they get from students in each grade. Their answers were what we used to put the personas that you're about to see together. So again, thank you. The format is the exact same as last week. We will share a persona and the question or questions that accompany that persona. And then we'll walk you through the Next Steps Idaho website answering those questions. We'll sum up with a takeaway slide. And when that takeaway slide pops up, we really encourage you to, in the chat, add your own resources that we missed or the ways that you usually answer those kinds of questions. So make it your own, add what you will, please. All right, and with that, I am gonna introduce you to Felicia. So Felicia's persona is really proactive and maybe a little bit impatient. So some of her questions are, can I start applying for scholarships now? Or when can I start applying to colleges? Uh, what's the process for applying to college? And maybe she wants to know a little bit more about financial aid, like what are grants? She really just wants to get those ducks in a row early. So for Felicia, I would steer her to the Next Steps Idaho website, the URL right here. And I would direct her to the mega menu in the upper right hand corner. And underneath this column for high school students, I would send her to her grade page. Now, based on the questions that she's asking, I would send her to this spring tab and then scroll down to search for scholarship opportunities. This content was put together with juniors in mind, so she's in the right place. This scholarships 101 resource opens up, and I put it in another tab, um, how to find scholarships, which is a good place to start. It emphasizes the need to spend a lot of time and you get out of it what you get in, put into it. Um, and then it answers, uh, or it just tells her a little bit more about what to expect. And then it obviously brings up the FAFSA a couple of times because that's gonna be a very big deal her senior year. I would direct her attention to the scholarship application tracker, which is available on a PDF and Excel sheet on that page, where she can just keep everything that she wants to apply to in order or that she already has applied to. She can keep records of that. One other thing before navigating away from this page that I might throw out there, because she might have a year and a half, maybe even close to two years left before she's going to graduate high school, is this raise.me micro scholarship. Um, depending on if the school she's interested participate in that program, she can sign up to follow them and complete certain activities for like $20 or $50. And they're really small, but they kind of add up and help her um, when she does choose to go to that school. So going back to this grade 11 page, I would scroll down and there's this 11th grade learning plan, again, opening in a new tab. And I would direct her to, let's see, again, this scholarship tracking activity, which is complementary to the scholarship tracker that I showed you a moment ago, as well as this brag sheets and references, which again, it's in the right hand column in this blue box, brag sheets and references. So for real go getter juniors who are just chomping at the bit to like get ahead on this, this will be a really handy activity to, again, keep track of everything that they're doing, maybe figuring out. Um, and I think so. So this is really helpful um, to figure out how they're going to present themselves to schools or employers um, or application committees um, in the coming year. And then I was getting ahead of myself. But if you go back to this for 11th graders page and you have this other uh, accordion menu item and it's get organized for your final year. And this, along with that brag sheet template, can be used to figure out who you're going to ask for letters of recommendation and just how to get ahead on the professional um, or college resumes that she will have to be writing. So takeaways for Felicia. Um, we really champion and encourage juniors who are this on the ball and like this committed to keeping records and keeping track of what they're uh, trying to do because they're doing themselves so many favors when they finally get to senior year. They'll be able to enjoy all the activities and then we'll have as much stress as people who maybe don't consider all these things beforehand. We would remind students like Felicia um, to expect that she might get um, quite a few financial aid offers from different institutions, 
but those aren't cumulative. Like you don't add them together. She has to choose one institution and then she can redeem the funds at that specific place. But it's not like a, like I said, cum cumulative award. And then, um, yeah, and then, oh, that was it, sorry. Um, and then it's also good to remind these, uh, these really proactive students that like a lot can happen in a year and a half or a lot can happen in a year, a lot can happen in six months. And so it's really okay to change their mind. And so with that, I'm gonna throw it over to Sarah, no, Byron, Sarah, it's Sarah, right? It's Sarah, yeah. And I'm gonna um, introduce you to George, who is someone that's wary of entrance exams. So he's really questioning, why do I have to take the SAT? How do I study for the SAT? Should I take the ACT? Why do I need to take the SAT if I don't plan on going to college? And if I don't get a good score on the SAT or ACT, can I take it again? Which one's easier? And how many times can I take these tests? So again, I would direct George to the Next Steps Idaho website. And I'd have him go up uh, to the mega menu. And I would have him go to the information center and underneath the resource library. And I would have him type in the word exam. And that's going to pull up a page called college entrance exams. And from here, he's going to get some basic information about the key differences between the SAT and the ACT, ways to practice improving his scores, uh, links to the SAT information, to free study tools from Khan Academy, ACT information, um, and how to choose between taking the ACT or the SAT. And Joan, if you could scroll down just a little bit down the bottom of the page, it can also talk to him about the upcoming Idaho School SAT Day and what he needs to do. I know there's a lot of questions this year because in December, um, the state board, um, waived the college entrance exam as a graduation requirement. So one of the things I would want to talk to George about is the fact that he needs to be looking at the schools he's interested in and whether or not, even though he may have an option to take the SAT during the school SAT day, he um, might want to make sure that those college entrance exams are still required um, at the institutions that he's interested in attending. Next, I would have George go back up to the mega menu and I would have him click on the career readiness for students. And there's a couple different areas. I know he's in 11th grade, but I wanna direct him to 10th grade. And the very second activity is Khan Academy and the College Board. So if George had taken the PSAT as a sophomore, he could link his College Board account with Khan Academy. And then based on how his score was on the PSAT, the Khan Academy would give him um, personalized SAT practice um, activities to complete to help him um, increase his SAT score. So this is all the information on how, what he would need to do to link his College Board and Khan Academy account. I'd also then have George go back to the dashboard and go to the 11th grade activities. And here under schedule and take the SAT ACT, here's a way for him to think through um, whether he knows when his school's going to have the SAT day, things he's going to plan to do to prepare, the same thing for the ACT, and then he can also come back in here, and once he's taken those, he can record his um, exam results. And then a final place I would have George go is back to the dashboard, scrolling down to the career readiness and exploration resources, and we have the college test prep section. And so again, this provides him information directly to the ACT and the SAT. He can go right to Khan Academy um, and he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't have to combine it with his, Khan, his College Board account. He could just go ahead and create a Khan Academy account and go through that way. Um, but he can also take advantage of the Learning Library Express, which is through the Idaho Library Commission. It's free. Um, he would just need his zip code and city to get started. He could then create an account and he would be able to do SAT and ACT test prep. Um, and if he were planning on taking any AP exams, he could do AP test prep in there as well. And then the final place I would have George go is back up to the mega menu. 
and to his four high school students to, to uh, 12th grade. And go down to the bottom of fall and information about whether or not to take the SAT or ACT again if they need to. So reminding students that in 12th grade they can take it again um, and the differences between the two. So some of the takeaways from George are that um, all juniors, but especially those who are wary of entrance exams, they just need to dare it down their list of institutions because with all these changing times, um, it's really important to know whether or not those college entrance exams and which ones are gonna be required at the institutions that they plan on attending. The other thing to make sure that George is aware of is that when he takes the SAT or ACT, to make sure that he's putting down all of the schools he thinks he might want to apply to so that they already receive his exam scores and he doesn't have to worry about going back and deciding, oh, I wanna add this school to my list and then having to get go through a different process to get that information sent over to that school. Um, so again, checking with the institutions to make sure what entrance exams they're going to require, if any, um, is George's best bet for success about um, taking his college entrance exams as a junior. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Byron. Actually, I'm gonna take this one. Thank you, Sarah. So next up we have Helen, who is really just starting to evaluate as a junior what she's gonna to have to do in the next year um, have to figure out what she wants to do after high school. So she wants to know specifically how many college credits she has. Maybe she was going to take a college credit class and then she decided not to and she wants to know, well, what does that mean? What do I do now? She probably is wondering um, if she wants to know if the colleges that she's interested in would accept the college credits that she has. Um, she's asking between the difference between AP classes and dual credit courses and which one is more beneficial for college. She's asking questions like, do I need this specific class for this specific college? Or um, what classes do I need to take in high school in general that will benefit me next year? So all really good questions um, and all just starting that evaluation process. So where I would direct Helen on the Next Steps Idaho website is to this top bar where it says search. And because so many of her questions revolved around credits and um, her own like course credits, like what she's achieved or accrued, I would have her type in advanced opportunities, which is the powerhouse resource page on the Next Steps Idaho website for um, all things related to overlooked courses, dual credits, exams, workforce training. If she hasn't already, we would it would tell her a little bit about that $4,125 that um, the State Department of Education makes available for all Idaho public high school students. Um, and then really importantly, down here at the bottom, you have this link that opens all of the college and university dual credit contacts um, who she may need to get in touch with to figure out what her transcript looks like. So I know that the advanced opportunities portal um, will help students see what courses were paid for, but they will have to confirm with the institution that they took the classes through what actual credits they have. Um, I would also direct her to the mega menu in the upper right hand corner. And then again, underneath four high school students, we would send her to the career readiness um, for students. And then underneath the ninth grade activities, there are electives um, that interest you, which is a, an interesting uh, activity that gets students thinking about what courses they actually do like, because so many of the questions that students like Helen bring to counselors seem to be really open-ended. Like sometimes they have the answers, like I definitely need to go to the school. How do I make that happen? But other times they say, this is what I have to date. What do I, how do I figure out what I do next? And it's almost too open-ended to be helpful because so many credits may be accepted at one institution, but not accepted or accepted, but only in the form of like an elective at other institutions. And so nailing down the specifics and being able to, to give the students clear answers is, um, is really important when you have someone who's just starting to evaluate. So this is one activity and then Again, on ninth grade, we have this overload and dual credit courses activity, which, um, which has this link to this advanced opportunities video, and in general can just be a good resource um, as students are talking about the credits that they need. Lastly, I would take her to the Next Steps Idaho website and the mega menu in the upper right hand corner, 
And then underneath Information Center, it's sent her to the Idaho College's directory. And then for any institution that she chooses, um, in the right-hand column underneath Information for Prospective Students, there's this link that says Explore Degrees and Programs. And again, this will help her figure out what she has and how that matches up to certain degrees. So she can look through what each institution offers. And again, that's from the Idaho College's directory on the Next Steps Idaho website. So some takeaways for Helen um, is to really encourage them to figure out what they actually want so you guys can make that conversation a little bit easier and get to the point of what they actually need and where they actually want to end up. And, uh, and it's never too early for these students to reach out to the institutions that they may be interested in attending and starting to work with an advisor there can be really helpful um, as they consider the next steps. So Byron, Sarah, did I miss anything for this one? No, I, it, I think that it works really uh, well. So uh, next up we have Arena. Uh, and uh, Arena is uh, uncertain. Uh, um, her big question is, how do I know if a school is right for me? She's also um, puzzled by, I, I don't know what I want to study. Uh, how should I decide? <clears throat> uh, because every, all of her friends are talking about a gap year, a question like, uh, if I take a year off, can I still get freshman scholarships at our, our college or university? Interested in the social part of, of uh, uh, college. Um, she got a letter from a sorority wanting her to consider joining. She's not really sure what that is with it. And overarching all of that is, uh, how do I pay for college and what are my options? And so uh, with that, I would have her go to the Next Steps website and go uh, up to the mega menu and go down to the self-assessment and planning tools. Clicking on that, there is a variety of resources that are available. Um, personally, um, having spent time with these uh, <clears throat> tools with it, because Arena is uncertain, I would probably start with the interest profiler. <clears throat> this is a way uh, for Arena to answer some questions and get some responses as to what are some of the broad career areas that she is interested in. Another option there is the learning style uh, uh, survey. This uh, tells her how she likes to learn, what works best for her. All of these starting the type of dialogue with a uh, counselor or an adult that could be helping Arena as she is beginning to move forward with it. <clears throat> Also, uh, for those of you that might remember, uh, we do have Future Finder, uh, which is a tool that can guide her to career uh, resources with that, and also Plan Smart. Uh, Plan Smart is a way uh, to start thinking about what actually costs uh, might be available in certain careers. It is a very, very high power uh, uh, resource. And it's probably best to do either one-on-one -on -one or a small group, at least the first time. It allows students to select um, you know, communities and it defaults in terms of providing information about costs that they may not have thought about. What if they are staying at home? Are they responsible uh, for part of the rent? Uh, or do they have a roommate if they're staying uh, on a college campus? All of those will take to browse careers, which is a tremendous resource uh, from there. I would next go uh, to uh, the resource or the search feature and type in understanding the cost of college. Uh, Irina is hearing from her, her peers and from her parents that college just costs too much. Well, this is a good thought piece uh, for Arena to look at and to uh, follow the links to see some of the things that might make the difference with it and might make co the cost of college achievable. 
Also on the bottom, there are, are related resources that are available for her and also for her family. I would then scroll up and have her go to the college cost um, estimator, <clears throat> which is in the quick links with it. By selecting whether or not she wants a two-year or four-year, selecting uh, one of the Idaho colleges with that, uh, she has an idea uh, of the, the costs that are, are coming up and she can build an actual budget for that. The costs that are included here comes <clears throat> from a national source. So the actual costs might be a little bit different, but will give uh, a young person an idea of how much the actual cost might uh, be. Also, uh, young people aren't always familiar that uh, with the costs that they might uh, be responsible for after they move from home, like insurance and others. It allows the opportunity to say, I can make some changes with this, or by adding scholarships <clears throat> or other sources of income like a summer work uh, um, experience that might be very, very helpful for them. So back to the, is this how to find the right college? Again, I'd use the search feature or the resource uh, library how to find the right college. <clears throat> and by clicking here, there's some really great things for young people to think about. There's some downloads on the far right with it. Uh, the how to, how to find the right college is uh, an important top link on the top. Things about student organizations and housings, takeaway, the social and extracurricular activities. And as she goes down, uh, further, uh, there is a, a, a short, you know, kind of fun video. Um, <clears throat> I met my best friend living in a college dorm, just something to kind of to engage in a conversation about the possibilities that are going forth. <clears throat> Lastly, uh, I would use the search feature or the resource library and type in ta uh, take five. Take uh, Take five. All right, here we go. <clears throat> uh, take five is uh, a downloadable flyer with it, but there are links that take five to 10 minutes, can be completed uh, singularly or sent out as an assignment and will allow them to think about things that, that might be important. One of the most important one is how to talk to your your high school counselor and the resource in the 12th grade life after high school. <clears throat> so for Arena, it is more about providing confidence as opposed to questions. Uh, some key takeaways are, uh, first of all, to uh, have Arena think about what she's interested in, what uh, might be a great start for her, where does her interest lie, what about her abilities, and to identify things that uh, might spark joy or might create a career option with that. <clears throat> also, to make sure that Arena knows that completing the FAFSA is a priority, that that is a way to be able to find out uh, the uh, total her family expected costs with that. It is a gateway into uh, federal financial aid also at times a gateway into scholarship and institutional fin financial aid. Those are all very important. And thinking about the options of maybe a summer job or some of the other types of ways to uh, uh, help pay for college. Is that something she'll have to do during college or what about the summer before college and how will that help? <clears throat> Primarily the big idea, and that's all you can, uh, uh, counselors and advisors know is to have Arena begin to focus on what might be her dream school. Maybe she wants to go to the Univer University of Hawaii because she loves the idea of possibly learning how to surf. Uh, maybe it's another dream school, <clears throat> but to also have fallback schools, schools that might be more practical in terms of cost or locations with it and then uh, the, the uh, school options that might include community college or going part-time 
or you know thinking uh, of ways to uh, have work and job experiences that might help her as she's moving forward. With that, Arena, those are some great ideas uh, for her to consider. Next. So now we're on to the code red question. And the code red question for juniors is, I'm waiting for the slide to change. Is it too early to think about this? And why are you making me? And the answer is, no, you should be thinking about your future yesterday. So for every junior, the countdown to start adulthood or increase independence and responsibility can be measured in months, not years. And while it is impossible to force maturity or attention, it is so important to try to give each student as much runway as possible to make critical decisions. Because the future is both exciting and daunting, gaining independence, becoming capable, fulfilling possibilities, and kids we know feel the pressure and the expectations. And everyone has dreams and these dreams are grounded by real world challenges of how do I get from where I'm at today to where I wanna be in the future. And the Next Steps Idaho website has resources that can help your juniors um, feel grounded by providing real experiences and information to help them plan for life after high school. So that is our really fast 30 minute walkthrough of Next Steps Idaho um, based on major questions that you have told us 11th graders have. We thank you for joining us. And we wanna reiterate that every Wednesday in February at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be holding a 30 minute webinar uh, that will feature our invented personas with the questions that you have told us students ask you. Um, next week, we'll be doing 10th grade and you can find last week's information by going to the mega menu, the four educators page and under the communication and last week's 12th grade video and the PowerPoint presentation are all there. And we'll be posting today's video presentation there as well. And, so again, and also just a, sorry, just a recognition uh, as a National Counselor Appreciation Week. Uh, so many things uh, we are appreciative for uh, all of you and those of you that are helping young people across the state know that the time that you are helping young people and their families are so important with that. And we want to say thank you. Yes. So thank you again for joining us. If you would like a more in-depth um, next step demo to help you um, with your own individual students or implementation at your school, feel free to reach out to us at info at nextsteps.idaho.gov and we'd be happy to plan um, a training just for you.